you can help me out, but a contradiction would be like, if I was to, like, if I was to say, uh, a cat ran across the street, and then the next book, the, the other book said a dog ran across, you have a complete total difference, that would be a contradiction. That would be a contradiction. Wouldn't it be a contradiction? Okay, you help me out here. I'm trying to come up with that on the spot. Because <laughs> both a cat and a dog could have run across the street, but each individual person Only pointed out. Oh, only, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When one excludes the possibility of the other, that's a contradiction. Right, yeah, thank you, because I want to make that point, because you can have, uh, Tom and I can go watch a movie, and we can talk about that movie, and we saw the same movie, and we saw all the same things going on, but he actually was looking at other things on the screen than I was looking at. Pervert! And he has a different uh, perspective. Boobies. So, <laughs> so, yeah, there's no boobies in Bambi, so. <laughs> but that's the only movie I'd ever go see with Tom, is Bambi. They are uh, re-releasing old Disney films like what was it, uh, the Little Mermaid? I think they like wanted to, you know, their bank account was getting a little dry. Let's just re-release yeah. old movies. Yeah. It's like, come on. Well, they might be re-releasing it too because of the hidden things that they have inside those movies. That are... oh yeah, Disney is kind of perverted. I heard. No, uh, yeah, they had uh, they had scenes in that movie that were uh, Lion King and, and Little Mermaid, and they put things in there kind of secretively. Well, more than the uh, things that are hidden, things that are in your face presented, uh, all kinds of occultic things, Islam, you know, with Aladdin, stuff like that, I, I, which even is a, kind of a... There was a point, because I was raised, like, at Melody Land and, like, TBN and all that crud. What's and Melody I, Land? M Melody Land was a church that was across the street from Disneyland, and it was where a lot of these faith movement people came from, but right. what, what came out of there that was great was Walter Martin, also. He came out of there. Huh. Um, but I had this idea that even the Wizard of Oz was bad because it had witches and all that. But then, you know, after a while, it's like, it's make-believe. It's a story that doesn't, it isn't really teaching uh, a message like some of the modern movies today sneak in there. Um, it's just a fantasy movie. So I don't think Darth Vader, if Darth Vader leads you into uh, apostasy, I think you're pretty weak. You were, well, you were, you were an apostate yeah. anyway. Yeah, and by the way, why didn't Darth Vader just choke everybody? Why did he fight them with a lightsaber? I mean, he could choke people in another ship. With his mind. With his mind. And then in Lord of the Rings, why didn't they just fly the big bird to the cave, to the volcano and drop the ring in? Why did they walk for two weeks? That makes no <laughs> sense. Well, the Lord of the Rings is a kind of an example where we're talking about how people will get on, you know, uh, Harry Potter's case. Uh, oh, it's quick, Dad. Get your, don't let your kids watch it. It's a little double standard when they say, oh, since C.S. Lewis wrote this series of, you know, Chronicles well, of Narnia and all that. What I would say to you thing, is there right? are movies that purposely put things in there to, as messages. For example, Bridge to Terabithia. Okay? Exactly. It was a false advertisement, first of all, because they made it look like this big fantasy film, and a lot of times it was just them standing around talking. But there's a scene when they're in the back of the truck, and she's talking about the Bible, and she basically says she doesn't care what the Bible says, that it's probably wrong. I don't know the exact quote, but she's talking about the Bible and saying it's not important, and that it's not, you know, it's what you feel in here. That's a message. Why would they insert that in a kid's film? about fantasy. They do it all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, like Lethal Weapon, you know, they have every time they stop, they stopped in front of a poster about gun control. Or the girl comes into the kitchen and she's wearing a pro-choice t-shirt and the camera's going. So there's little things like that that are purposeful, but you know, every meticulous detail is planned. You know, Glinda the Witch of the North is, I'm sorry, like I said, if that leads you into perdition, then uh, you got problems. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, movie review man. What's your f favorite film that's recently come out? Huh? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch too many movies, so... What about The Passion of the Christ? Some people talk about how, uh, you know, Mel Gibson... Oh, the most awesome up. scene was the levitation scene. Which one was that? Did you catch up? Did you catch it? Like, I had to watch it like five times. I looked oh, at it like, yeah, yeah. Where he's, they oh my gosh. Threw him off the thing? Or what they did is they nailed, they, had, they nailed him on the cross. And I guess they didn't do the nail right. And the guard, the one Roman guard was like, you have to bend the back of the nail. Whatever. So they turned the cross over. And I believe it was Mary Magdalene or whatever that was there. She was freaking out because she knew that Jesus was going to fall on his face. And all of a sudden, boom, he's like that far off the ground. And there was nothing. Anyway. Yeah. So, and okay. the cross was flat, so there's no reason why he was that far off the ground. It was levitation. But there was other things. That, I mean, obviously the Veronica sure. wiping the face and all these things that were either uh, well, the movie was, not in the Bible, yeah. part of a Catholic tradition, or... The movie was based on a, uh, on a book by a, a, 
a Catholic nun that was a spiritist, I believe, and she believed that she could astroplane into the past and that she was there at the crucifixion and witnessed these things. And so Mel Gibson used this as a, ba a backdrop, which he had a perfect opportunity to really put out a great film because when he showed the crucifixion scene, I thought it was great. I think I, it, it portrayed the crucifixion, I think, more like what it probably was like. But all the other junk that he threw in there is like, why? You know, the little midget baby uh, thing that, you know, the devil was holding and all that kind of is weird, weird stuff. So he kind of dropped the ball a little bit. But the, the big misnomer about the Passion of the Christ is not is the fact that it emphasizes his suffering and not his propitiation. Although I have to give it one compliment. It's one of the only Jesus films that I know of that includes the line, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by me. They always drop that second one out. And they include the resurrection at the end. Yeah, so I was kind of torn with in. it too. I was like, ah, there's some bad stuff, but it was also good. Stuff. Right. So anyway. Now the passion of Christ too with Chris Rock. That's help me out here. Oh. You're just whipping me with cat and nine tails because I'm black. Right. This, uh, that Christ was crucified for the sins of his people, and he rose again on the third day. That he's coming back to judge the wicked and to uh, and to gather the righteous. And we're out here not because. We're getting any kind of uh, money from this or any kind of fame from this. In fact, if you think about it, this is a Saturday night. And we come out, I've been coming out here for two years. Some of these guys have been doing it longer. But we come out here and we get yelled at, we get ridiculed, we get spit on. I'm not trying to be like, oh, you know, martyrism here. But the, the whole thing is if, if I was really out here for some kind of ego trip, this is not the place to do it. <laughs> it's not the place to do it because people insult you all the time. But I'm out here because... I know what I am, and I know what I was delivered from, and I know that apart from Christ, I'm a wicked person. I know what goes on in my mind, I know what goes on in my life, and I know, you know, that what Christ has done for me. And if I know what Christ has done for me, then I care about you. Now, I may not care about you the same way I would a, a, a girlfriend or a wife or something like that, but there's a type of love that I have for you because I was you, and I still am you. I, I'm being sanctified. So anytime any, you get the impression that a Christian is coming to you and saying that for some reason he is better than you, no, 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 no. He is just, he's found grace. The gospel very simply says, okay, there, I'm going to back up a little bit here. There's a gospel going on in Calvary chapels and all the different churches where they teach that man was, you know, they'll say man is dead in his sins, but what they really define it as is man is wounded, man is sick. And that Christ provides the remedy, and all you have to do is come to Christ with your own free will, and God will save you. The problem is, you're not drowning. You have drowned. You are dead. You are floating face down. So I got in this little discussion with someone on the internet the other day that was trying to say that I could boast about my salvation. I said, well, wait a second here. You are telling me that you go to heaven because you made a better choice than your next door neighbor did. Okay, that your will was allowed to choose and you were smarter than the guy next door. So when you get to heaven, even though Christ did the work, you can boast because the work didn't mean anything unless you came and picked it up, right? But I can't boast because I was dead. I was floating face down. I was lost without hope, the scripture says. And Christ imparted life in me and gave me life and, 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 and saved me through that life and, and is now sustaining me and carrying me on to glorification. So I have nothing I can boast in. It's all of Christ. And it's sad to me that there are people who call the name of Christ, who go on the internet and they beat up and attack people who want to give God all the glory. Amen. No, no, no. I'm, I'm disagreeing with it. He said, I, I rather have the wrong doctrine and the right attitude than the right doctrine and the wrong attitude. Now, I'm going to twist this a little bit. That's completely wrong. I'm going to say... I would rather give God too much glory than not give him enough. That's the kind of saying I would end my book with. So I'm going to pass it off to uh, that kid right there. Come up here. <laughs> God bless you guys.